want to read a passage of scripture. I understand somebody who was in here last week spoke on the servanthood of God. Well, I'm going to speak on the servanthood of God too. I was going to change it, but uh, I don't mind doing that either. But uh, this is rather good. He probably read whoever it was came in. Luke 22. Luke 22. Verse 24. Verses 24 to 30. Now there was also a dispute among them. Imagine that. The disciples disputed. Baptists do, don't dispute things, do they? <laughs> United Church? Roman Catholics? The disciples disputed. They couldn't get it all together themselves. They didn't agree on certain things. Now there was also a dispute among them. This is chapter 22 of Luke, verse 24. Now there was also a dispute among them as to which of them should be considered the greatest. They were asking Jesus to give them the pride of place wherever they met to eat a meal or for evening prayers. And he said to them, the kings of the Gentiles exercise lordship over them, and those who exercise authority over them are called benefactors, but not so among you. On the contrary, he who is greatest among you, let him be as the younger, and he who governs as he who serves. For who is greater, he who sits at the table or he who serves? Is it not he who sits at the table? Yet I am among you as the one who serves." But you are those who have continued with me in my trials. And I bestow upon you a kingdom just as my father bestowed one upon me, that you may eat and drink of my table in my kingdom and sit on thrones judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Let's take a look at this passage. This is a remarkable passage of scripture, Luke 22, verses 24 to 30. And I want to speak on being servants in a pride-filled world. Being servants in a pride-filled world. The disciples disputed amongst themselves who among them should be the greatest. Lord, is it I? Don't I give you both my ears to listen to what you have to say? It couldn't be those other people, those other 11 amongst the 12. It's got to be me, Lord. I want to sit beside you where you are at your kingdom and in the table of your kingdom. And Jesus pointed out the tendency on the part of many people. The Gentiles lorded over people. They want to have pride of place too. Somewhere in here, there may be a reference, too, to the Old Testament people, the Hebrew people. They wanted pride of place, too. They wanted to be the first one to come out of Egypt and cross to, to the Holy Land. Everybody wants to be closest to Jesus and to be able to say, Lord, I am closest to you. I am the one who is closest to you. Don't look there or over there. You've got it in me, Lord. No one will go further than I will. I will swim the greatest oceans. I will, I will jump from the top of the greatest mountains. Just give me the word, Lord, to show you how devoted I am. Jesus pointed out the tendency of the Gentile kings to exercise lordship and to have power over their people. Then there are those who are called authorities and they are called benefactors that is those who do well who are friends of the people and then there are those everyone trying to get ahead of the other the greatest must be like the youngest said Jesus and the leader must be like the servant for I am the one who came into the world to save sinners I am among you I am among you as the one who serves. People look for special praise. People look for special positions. People look for special privileges. All of us want to be up ahead of the other person. Always, we always want for our church the best building, the best minister. 
with the deepest, most profound faith. People look for special praise. In modern terms, those who sit down to eat are considered the greatest, the elite, the most Im important. This is what they said, Lord, when, when you come in your kingdom, let me sit beside you at the table and break bread with you. Let me be the first to break the bread with you and drink from the cup. In the Ottawa Citizen, at least once a week, there's a page, page that is dedicated to the special positions of people with special positions in the community. And everybody does their best to get their photos and their name on the social page. That's what the disciples want. Lord, me first. Consider that I have something to give you that nobody, nobody else has the ability to give to you. But Jesus said it mustn't be so amongst, amongst our people who believe in me. And so Jesus holds up his hand and says, Whoa! Stop thinking like that. Commit yourself to me. Change your attitude. Be careful. Let it not be so. Be so. But rather, let your ministry be like that of young people without any particular influence. Be not like someone in charge, but be rather a servant. Be a servant. And in the long run, Jesus says, a kingdom will be given to you. And I bestow upon you a kingdom, verse 29, Luke 22, just as my Father bestowed one upon me that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom and sit on the thrones judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Be humble in the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. Be sensitive to what he has to say to you. Let him correct you. Let him adjudicate on your life. Enter into the truth of the gospel and share with others what they have to offer too. The time will come when you will when you will sit on thrones and judge the twelve tribes of Israel. But the humbler you are now, and the more open to me you are now, Jesus is saying. In response to that, I will give you 12 thrones and the kingdom of God. Note the words of Jesus. The single most important word here in this passage. I am amongst you not as one who serves, but as the one who serves. Look at what your text says. I am among you as the one who serves. Note the definite article. And if that definite article isn't in there, the, then you have a bad translation. I am among you as the one who serves. In other words, I demonstrate what true servanthood is. 